How's it going guys and welcome to the first video in our spectacular knife weekend. As you may or may not have heard, Blade HQ will sadly not be attending Blade Show, but we don't want to miss an opportunity to sit down with some of your favorite makers and manufacturers. We're going to be releasing videos all day long, so make sure to hit the notification bell, make sure to stay on YouTube because we've got some sweet content coming your way. And to kick it off, we've got the newest stuff from Benchmade. And of course, if we're going to sit down with Benchmade, we've got to get Troy on the line. So Troy, how's it going? I'm well, Zach. How are you? Dude, doing so good. <laughs> I'm excited to do this with you guys. It's uh, it's an interesting year, so I think this is uh, the adaptability of, of what we do. But yeah, we do have, uh, I brought four knives today, um, so we can go ahead and uh, kick things off if you want. Yeah, man, let's dive in. So a lot of you guys at home have probably seen some of these knives on the internet. We have as well. We haven't handled any of these yet, so hopefully we can get you guys some on-camera action, get you some comparisons going. And to kick it off, obviously the knife that everybody's talking about right now, uh, your new Os the new knife in your Osborne series. So tell us about this thing. So first off, for anybody who hasn't seen, looks like a regular Osborne, and then you do this. <laughs> so what, what's the story on this bad boy, Troy? 20 years in the making. Um, we talked about it in Knife Banter a couple months ago, but uh, this is the 20th year of the Osborne. And so we're playing around with a lot of different variations, different materials, but we haven't changed the mechanism yet. And this is something that we've heard a lot of from people. Man, I wish I had an Auto 940. Man, I wish I had an Auto 940. So here it is. Um, we tried to keep this thing as true to form as it gets. And so you've got your standard. Aluminum handles, green anno, kept the closed backspacer with the purple anodization there. Um, S30V, reverse Tonto, textbook, Warren Osborne. And this is a push button automatic. So you do have your firing button here. And then we have an inline safety tied up there in the back of the handle. So um, one thing that I do like about this knife, and I actually just learned recently. So we went with a split arrow clip on it. Uh, generally, you're seeing on the standard 940s out of the factory, the, the Benchmade stamped um, kind of like black anno clip there. So this split arrow clip design actually was our first clip collaboration with Warren Osborne. Um, so kind of nodding back to the heritage of where this knife came from um, and, and what it is now. So I'm, I'm super stoked on this. Oddly enough, this guy's like three tenths of an ounce lighter than the standard 940. Um, right on. But it's just an awesome little push button automatic. You know, it's 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 true to form, like I said earlier, and we really haven't deviated too far from what made this knife such a popular EDC. Oh, I think that's awesome. And I actually didn't know about the pocket clip on that. So I'm glad we're sitting down talking about it. That is really cool and also cool not just that it's a little bit different, because I did notice that, but that it's a throwback to something that, you know, one of the original collaborations you guys did with, uh, with Warren. So really, really cool knife. I mean, it just makes sense, right? Like when you handle it, you're just like, oh yeah, no, like this, it just makes sense. When you get it in hand, you're like, yeah, no, this is, I've always wanted this, right? <laughs> totally. Yeah, it's weird yeah, yeah. seeing an Osborne in a, in a black box, but uh, uh -huh. 2020, man, why not? <laughs> right, well, it's a perfect year for weird, right? <laughs> now, I have... <laughs> I have to admit when I when I first saw this I got because you know I have that the outlast and I and I or the sorry the mediator I have an outlast too yeah. that's great too but I have a mediator <laughs> I love my mediator and when I saw the pictures of this of this 9400 I was like ah, I mean I got a mediator like why would I why would I do why would I do the uh, you know the Osborne auto and then when I finally you know because you sent us a sample so we could take a look at this and have it for camera they really are very different Right, like they like yeah. on on a lot of levels, they really are. And I will say, how, for how much I love my mediator, this lock on the ninety four hundred is so elegant and such a simple solution. A lot of times, I feel like locks either visually get in the road of an auto, or mechanically get in the road of an auto. So even when it is a like a back lock like this, it's like hard to engage or it feels crunchy. But dude, this lock is buttery smooth. Like it's so it's good. satisfying. It's it's got a great yeah. action to it. I sit there and almost fidget with the lock just as much as I do open and closing in my hand. Where you're starting to see us kind of tap into the EDC side of of like tactical designs. Um, it doesn't have to be super tactical to be to be a practical knife, and and you don't have to be an operator or um, anything like that to carry a switchblade auto, especially as more and more states open up to allow automatic knives. Oh, super cool, man! And 
And then again, you know, those, those original hits of color that you guys have put on this thing, like everything about this is just awesome. Um, so yeah. really cool. I was stoked to finally get one, get it in hand. And uh, yeah, I had to I had to eat my words a bit when I was when I was comparing the mediator and the uh, and the, and the nine, 9400 because I was like, oh no, it's it's different. It's good. It's it's right there. Now, kind of on the opposite end of the spectrum. So you're talking about usability, you know, kind of tactical, kind of EDC. <laughs> Next up is the exact opposite of that. So so tell us a bit about this new Tangu tool. Yeah. So uh, kind of staying in the same vein as like custom collaboration designs, Jared Oser is the newest uh, custom designer to come on board with our design team. And so you saw the 601 Tangu flipper last month. Um, that knife has been super cool. And we just wanted to maintain that same aesthetic. So you have 20 CV kind of gnarly Tonto blade there, same G10 coloration on the handles. Um, but this guy's small. It comes in a, a, a leather slip similar to what you get with the 601 Tangu. So side by side, these are a great pair for each other. Um, super small blade. I can't remember on this guy. I think we're like one, it's just over one inch. Um, and then yeah. the Tang here actually has got a little pry tool towards the tip. Uh, you've got your bottle opener here as well. So I think like you and I were talking, this is a friction folder. It's a non-locking blade. So this knife is going to be a great little travel knife. Um, if you're overseas or internationally where you run into a lot of more strict knife legislation, this is going to be something that I think uh, a lot of people are going to pick up on just subtle details. For sure. Well, and I think, I think even just stateside, right? Like just stateside, mm -hmm. this is such a cool, I mean, that whole gentleman's carry, right? Like that's a whole category, right? We do, we've done a handful of videos on this and this is such a perfect knife for that category. I mean, you get this this really nice looking leather slip, right? That doesn't look out of place or weird to pull out of, I mean, it almost looks like something you put a lighter in or something, you know, just classy, yeah. right? And then, and then you pull this knife out and whether you're, you know, opening a box, cutting some string, whatever, right? Like cutting a little like thread off the end of your, your suit coat or whatever it is, it's not out of place anywhere, right? And then you get not only the 20 CV blade, but then you get the advantage of having the pride tool and the bottle opener. So it, it lends itself to, to both like just going out and having a good time, but also, you know, if you have to do something, you got a little tool in your pocket to do it, right? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely geared more towards that EDC crowd, the guys that are spending money yeah. on pocket candy and accessorizing sure. and stuff like that. Um, it's a niche design, but I think that people would be surprised as to the, the relatively universal application of the knife. You know, it's not yeah. it's not going to be your be all end all or, or the only blade you're really running in your pocket, but it's a it's a nice counterpart to whatever your primary EDC might be. For sure. Well, and you know, for years, I only carried one knife. I'm just like, ah, just one knife in my pocket, one knife in my pocket. And in the last year or so, I've been converted to carrying a multi-tool around my pocket as well. And I could see something like this making the rotation so easily because of how handy, again, just having the pry tip uh, like in my pocket all the time, how handy that is. I could see this thing being just a useful little tool. Um, another cool thing about it too is a lot of times with slips, at least in my experience, a lot of time with slips, what you get is, is the leather's either too tight or it's you know, hard to get the tool out of the top of the slip. But you guys have really considered that. And I don't know if this was in conjunction with Jared or if this was just you guys, but either way, like the way the slip works is great because it the top just peels back a little and you can just grab the tool right out, whether you've put it in tool side up or scale side up, right? Yeah, um, I remember when we were like prototyping this out and we were trying to get different slips made and stuff like that. Um, a couple of the first runs, I was uh, spending an exorbitant amount of time trying to like fish this thing out of it. Um, so I'm, I'm super happy to see where we ended up on this slip. I think it's the perfect height. It's the perfect berth at the, uh, the opening here for you to just kind of snag that pry tip and pull the tool out. So yeah, I'm, I'm stoked on it. Definitely isn't something that I would have carried normally, but now that I've had a chance to do so, it, it actually ends up in my pocket uh, a little more than I would have thought. Cool. Right on. Um, sweet. Now, Bouncing kind of back into your guys' normal wheelhouse. <laughs> we have a, mm -hmm. a, a cool variation of the Mini Freak. So what's the story on this guy? Yeah, you're seeing a lot of customization, like aftermarket customization and stuff like that with knives like the Bug Out. Freaks are even getting it quite a bit and the Griptilians. Um, the Freaks, the MO of the Freak has always been 
ergonomics and comfort. Um, mm -hmm. And so we tried to maintain that here while bumping up the material a little bit. It's no secret that we love S90V and carbon fiber. Um, so we felt like this was the perfect platform to give that treatment. Uh, red, anodized, thumb studs and barrel spacers for a little splash of color. But same deal, it's just super comfortable in hand. It's lightweight, it's a little classier than the uh, than the dual durometer handle on the on the standard version. But this, this is an inline variation. This is gonna be here to stay. Uh, it's not a sprint run or anything like that. So I'm, I'm actually really fired up on this knife too. A little smaller for me than I would generally carry, but because of the ergonomics and how dialed they are with a little bit of that thumb ramp there, even in a larger hand, this thing is super comfortable. So I, uh, I really enjoy this knife and possibilities are kind of endless with it. Yeah. And I think that, I mean, S90V alone, that puts you in a, in a place where you're just like, oh, cool. Like I'll just have this knife and not have to sharpen it for a long time. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, then when you go to sharpen it, eh, that's another story, but, but it is nice to have a, a blade in your pocket that if you keep track of it, it's pretty easy to hone up that edge from time to time. And you don't ever have to truly resharpen very often. Uh, I think that's really neat. That's it. That's, that's a key or like critical element of, of these higher edge retention blade steels are just not just run at a higher rock well s90 so long as you stay on top of it cool um now last one that we have on the table this is this is a shout back to just straight up benchmade's heritage right like full yeah. on this is this is where you guys cut your teeth and knives and it's a new balisong so yeah. kind of walk us through this because i i know balisongs and i and i can i can feel what this is i can see what this is but I'm, i know i'll miss details so walk us through this thing yeah uh Kind of like you alluded to, this is where we started. Uh, Bally Songs is, is where Benchmade really came from. And it, before being Benchmade, we were actually Bally Song. That was the name of our business. Um, before that, we were Pacific Edge Cutlery and stuff like that. But um, this is really getting back to our roots. And so it's this. I would consider this new-ish just because your chassis and handle is the same as the 87 more or less. The thing that's different is that we went with a drop point blade and you've got these cool through hole milled fuller here to match the the milling pattern on the handle itself. So um, just pretty straightforward, great little flipper. I'm, I'm also not super big on flipping myself. Um, I'm one of the guys that just lights my fingers up left and right when I do try it. So yep. uh, it's either a dull blade <laughs> or a trainer for me. But yeah, super cool here. And beyond just the knife, uh, one thing that I like is the slip that it comes in. This is a, it's a Snake Eater tactical slip. And this is kind of modeled off like a 1911 mag uh, pouch. So you've got uh, kind of teeny molly webbing looking compatibility on the back. And it does come with some Velcro straps in the package for you to affix to your belt or pack or wherever you want to keep this thing. So uh, just a nice subtle little detail there on top of the, the knife itself. But um, one thing I didn't mention, same as the 87, this is an integral billet titanium handle. Each handle is a single piece, uh, so pretty pretty darn cool technology there. These these have quite the runtime on the mills. These are a, a tough knife to manufacture, and I I do really like the magnetic spring latch here. I think that's a pretty cool feature. When you are flipping, it keeps that latch out of the way, and you don't get the crazy bite marks on on the uh, the safe handle there when when that latch swings around and smacks it so you see a lot of guys like pulling their latches off other bally's or going with like a nylon knot rope or something like that this you just you really don't even have to worry about it with the uh the 85 or the 87 so oh, that's cool that's super cool right on man um well some really rad stuff on the table like i said most of the stuff i think we've seen on the internet but even even we at blade hq hadn't handled it so stoked to get some of it on the table and show some of it off um, now, you know how it goes, uh, at the end of this thing, what do you got in your pocket? I am carrying 940-1. I told you guys. Oh, you I got a new one, mine. huh? Yeah, I had to get a new one, man. I, uh, <laughs> I was searching high and low for mine the last time we spoke. Uh, side note, I actually found my 940-2001. So it was Dope. a pair of pants that I never wear and uh, pulled that out of the closet one day when the, the laundry pile was running a little bit low and I was surprised to find that Dash 2001 in there. But 
Yeah, 940-1 is hard to beat. I told you I love S90 and carbon fiber, mm-hmm. so this is, uh, this is a knife that dominates my pocket real estate more times than not. Cool. Yeah, and if you guys haven't seen the video we did with Troy, we sat down, oh, it was what, a month, month or two ago? We sat down a month or two ago and talked top five Benchmade, and uh, he's got some pretty good stories at losing that 940-1 constantly. So <laughs> go check that out. <laughs> uh, I've got a bad right track on. record, man. <laughs> cool, man. Well, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you so much for uh, showing off some of this new shiny stuff. Um, I think most of the stuff's available or, or going to be available very soon. I know we've fulfilled some pre-orders on our end, so uh, just check the website, guys. We'll have some links down in the description. Thank you, Troy, and uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much for watching that video. Make sure to check out our Spectacular Knife Weekend playlist here on YouTube. We're sitting down with some of your favorite makers and manufacturers. You can get all your knife needs at bladehq.com. Hit subscribe for more awesome knife content, and we'll catch you on the next one.